everyone, I am Ms. Hu, your physics teacher. In this video, we are going to be learning about manometers. We will find out how manometers work and we will learn to solve questions involving manometers. In case you didn't know, manometers are used to measure liquid pressure or gas pressure. By the way, manometers are also known as U-tubes. Not like the YouTube video you're watching right now. Manometers are named U-tubes because they're shaped like a U. Now, first things first, to understand how manometers work, we must understand the concept of liquid pressure. The thing about liquids is that when they're placed in a container, they're always going to try to achieve equilibrium in terms of pressure. So, if you pour liquid into a funny-shaped glass vessel just like this, you'll find that in spite of the shape, the size, the diameter, whatever wonky little thing going on in each tube, you'll find the water level will always even themselves out because they're trying to achieve the same pressure. If you can recall, the liquid pressure does not depend on the size or the shape or the slant of the tube holding it. It depends on the density, the gravitational acceleration, and the depth. In this case, all these glass tubes are connected. So what happens is the liquids will try to even themselves out, causing all of them to come up to the same level. So a general rule you can always use when it comes to liquids is to remember. Same liquid, same level, same pressure. How does this apply to a manometer? As we know, the pressure is the same at the same level for the same liquid. Same liquid, same level, same pressure. So if you were to pour a liquid into a U-tube or a hose, you find that the liquid will balance itself out on both arms of the tube. Just like that weird looking glass vessel. So if both tubes were exposed to the same atmosphere, the levels in both the left and right arm would be the same. Because of this, manometers can be used to measure liquid pressure or gas pressure. Let us recall, liquid pressure is calculated based on the formula of rho g h, where rho is density of the liquid, g is gravitational acceleration, while h is the depth of the liquid. Using the formula of liquid pressure, we can solve questions involving manometers. First of all, let's look at how liquid pressure can be measured using a manometer. By the way, I do have a video where I've placed both water and oil into a tube in real life and I show you how the liquid levels can differ as well as a complete calculation of that kind of situation. Do watch that video if you'd like to observe that practical demonstration of an actual manometer using water and oil. For now, let's get into the calculations. In this example, we have water and oil poured into a manometer and both ends of the manometer are open to the atmosphere. Because water and oil have different densities, therefore, obviously, the levels of water and oil will be different. And that's because the liquids are trying to achieve equilibrium based on the pressure balance. Remember, same liquid, same level, same pressure. In this example, we need to calculate the density of the oil given that the density of water is 1,000 kg per meter cube. Now, how do we solve this question? Remember this mantra, same liquid, same level, same pressure. So that's why we will take the level at a dotted line, which I have marked here as P and Q. You can see that the dotted line is touching the same liquid and they're at the same level. That means the pressure at P is equal to the pressure at Q. Same liquid, same level, same pressure. Next, what we'll do is a side-by-side -side substitution. On the left-hand side, we will write down everything that contributes to the pressure at P. So you can see P is on the left arm, which is exposed to the atmospheric pressure. That's why pressure at P is the atmospheric pressure plus the water pressure above P. On the right-hand side, above Q, it's atmospheric pressure plus the oil pressure above Q. Atmospheric pressure is not given in this question, but the good news is you can just cancel them out on both sides. That's why we don't need the atmospheric pressure value. So this can be simplified as a water pressure above P equals the oil pressure above Q. 
Remember that you can only cancel the atmospheric pressure if it exists for both arms. So to solve the liquid pressures, we just need to use the formula of rho GH. So we have rho GH of water above P equals to the rho GH of oil above Q. Next, just substitute the values accordingly. So for the water pressure above P, we will use the density of water, which is 1000. We've got G, and the height is 4 cm, which we've written here as 0.04, because we have to write it in meters. For the oil pressure, we don't know what the density of oil is, so we'll leave it as rho. We've got G there, and we know that the oil column has a height of 10 cm, and that's why we've written the value of 0.1, which is in meters. Now, I didn't write the value of G because, fortunately, we can also cancel out G because it's equal on both sides. So this is just a mathematically faster way to solve the question. And in the end, we get the value of the density of oil rho at 400 kilograms per meter cube. Now, the manometer can also be used to measure gas pressure. All we need to do is hook up one of the arms to a gas tank. In all three diagrams, you can see that the right arm is exposed to the atmosphere, which means that there's atmospheric pressure pressing on the surface of the liquid in the right arm. In all three diagrams, you can see that the levels of liquids are different. So in the diagram on the left, because the liquid levels are equal, this means that the gas pressure inside the tank is equal to the atmospheric pressure. In the diagram in the middle, you'll find that the level of liquid is lower at the gas tank compared to the one that's exposed to atmospheric pressure. So think about it this way. Because the gas pressure is pressing down, if the gas pressure is higher, this will cause the level of liquid to be lower. So what this tells us is that in the middle diagram, the gas pressure is higher than the atmospheric pressure. In the diagram on the right, the level is higher than the gas pressure. So what this tells us is that the atmospheric pressure is higher than the gas pressure because it's able to press more on the surface of the liquid, causing it to be lower. Let's take a look at an example to solve the manometer for gas pressure. Again, we will use the same mantra of same liquid, same level, and same pressure. Say in this case, we need to calculate the gas pressure in the gas tank, and we're given the value of the atmospheric pressure and the density of mercury. The liquid inside the manometer is mercury, and there is a height difference between the two surfaces in both arms, which is 200 millimeters. So remember, same liquid, same level, same pressure. The easiest way to solve this is to look for the level of liquid which is lower. In this case, the level of liquid is lower in the left arm. So at the dotted line, you can see that we have the same liquid level on both arms, and that means the pressure is the same at that point. So pressure in the left arm equals to the pressure in the right arm. Again, let's do a side-by-side -side substitution. So the pressure in the left arm is caused by the pressure of the gas. The pressure in the right arm is caused by the atmospheric pressure as well as the pressure of the mercury column. We know that the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters mercury. The mercury column is 200 millimeters, and you can actually just write it this way, 200 millimeters Hg. So this makes it a lot easier for us. All you need to do is just add the values up. The pressure of the gas is 960 mmHg. But let's say we need to convert this value into Pascal. How do we do this? All we need to do is just use the formula of rho GH. So I'm going to rewrite it here. Pressure of the gas is 960 mmHg. Using the formula of rho GH, all we need to do is substitute the value of the density of mercury in rho and the value of H is 0 0.96, which is the value of the height of 960 millimeters expressed in meters because we must write the value of H in meters. And this gives us the pressure value of 128 kilopascal. Let's look at another example. In this case, we have the level of the mercury to be lower in the right arm. Again, we're going to solve this by taking the lower level, which is the right arm. So pressure in the left arm equals to pressure in the right arm. A side-by-side -side substitution again. In the left arm this time, it's pressure of the gas 
plus the pressure of the mercury column. The right arm only has atmospheric pressure above it. Therefore, we can calculate the pressure of the gas as atmospheric pressure minus the pressure of the mercury column. Just like before, we can write the values in mmHg. So we've got 760 minus 200, giving us 560 mmHg. To get the value in Pascal, just like before, we're just going to use the formula of rho GH. We're going to substitute the values accordingly, and this gives us the pressure value of 75 kilopascal. Let's look at one more example. Never assume that one end is always exposed to the atmosphere. Sometimes you can get a situation like this where you've got a closed end. Let's say the closed end is a vacuum. So to solve this question, we will use the same mantra. Same liquid, same level, same pressure. So pressure in the left arm equals to the pressure in the right arm. So the left arm is the pressure of the gas, whereas the right arm is only the pressure of the mercury column. The right arm is closed, so it's not exposed to the atmosphere. It's a vacuum on the inside, so there's no air pressure. Then the closed end is a vacuum, so there's zero air pressure above the mercury. That's why the pressure in the right arm is only equal to the pressure of the mercury column. That's why we can just write the pressure of the gas as 600 mmHg. Just like before, if we need to express this value in Pascal, we just need to use the formula rho GH, do the substitution accordingly, and that's how we can get the value of the pressure of the gas to be 80 kPa. If you found this video to be educational and helpful, please click like and subscribe for more lessons, solutions, and exam strategies from your physics teacher, Ms. Ho. For an updated reference on the syllabus of SPM and IGCSE Physics, please visit my website at physicsrocks.com. Good luck and happy studying!